this to be one of the most beautiful and um, evocative pieces you find in the Mississippi Delta because it's really about the idea of love. It's not lust, it's not seduction, it is the idea of a man, the imagery of a man who has lost his wife and is literally chasing behind the casket or the hearse saying, I'll go with her to her resting place. It's played in the key of D. Uh, we usually capo it up one fret because that's where Reverend Wilkins sang it and played it in E flat. But for the sake of instruction, we'll keep it in D so that um, we're not confused about you know the chords that we're playing. And it's usually played in drop D, or at least I play it in drop D. That's what I hear. Um, and by drop D, I mean I take the E the bass E and drop it down to D so that it matches the D uh, or the D open on the fourth string. Now you've got these parts of the song and it's sort of as you move through the parts it's a 1-4-5 blues or 1-4-5 song uh, played in the key of D. So strummed through it it's pretty simple. It's like I'll go with her I'll follow her, I will, she, to her resting place, to D. I'll go with her, hey, I'll follow her, I will, D, to her resting place. Pretty simple, right? But of course, Reverend Wilkins is a, is extraordinary guitarist, and, and what he does is he uses voicings that uh challenge us a little bit right 
So the first voicing that we hear is a D chord, but we're moving it. We're moving. Right, from a C sharp, sliding into a D. I hear a pinch between the D string and the and the uh, uh, one string or the the E string. Where you're gonna get a D against a D. The next component of the song is this little figure where we go. The pinky is catching the D string at the third fret, letting it go, and then catching the the D string at the third fret. So. Twilight Zone ish, y'all. You know, that kind of thing, right? But there's another little beat in between that. You actually hear this. Right? So the index finger is giving an offbeat, playing that chord that little first two notes of the D chord as we do this little figure between the third string and the fourth string. It's kind of like this. Right? So, the two parts so far is... Then we go to the third part, which is, of course, the four chord. Now, we've got it tuned down. We've got the, the bass uh, E tuned down to D. So we really concentrate on that fifth string at the second fret. And it has this, a D, I'm sorry, G seventh. reason I'm covering the fifth string with my ring finger is because I want to have my index open and my pinky available to do this. So the index is covering the first string at the first fret, little pull off, and my pinky is covering the second string at the third fret. So I get this. Right? In rhythm and in the context of the song, it works like this. And we go right back into the one part. So again, slow. to the one part which is an A chord but we make it what we call a long A which is really an A out of a G shape right if we barred at the second fret and then made a G shape chord it would be an A right but we don't want all of this right we probably just want to play the top four strings seventh so uh, G 
seventh, back in two. Right? So we've got the one, four, five, but some kind of little bit different chord shapes or movements within the chords that give us a different feel or flavor. So let's review again. Essentially, that's all there is to this song, right? Except for one thing, the rhythm. One of the things that I'm, I'm discovering now after playing this music for years and years is that this music has a Native American uh, influence. Uh, a lot of these blues men think about Charlie Patton and the way he looked. Charlie Patton was probably half you know, maybe a quarter uh, Native American. And Reverend Reverend um, Wilkins was part Cherokee. So when I've always known that when you're playing this kind of music, you're sort of playing the drum on the guitar. What didn't exactly occur to me is whose drum are we playing? Are we playing an African drum because we're playing African music? Maybe. But I think we're, par we're probably playing native american drums we're probably playing an indian drum because that is a prevalent rhythm that you find in the culture in mississippi and alabama and georgia and florida you know uh, there was this interaction and this interchange between uh african american and native american people and i think that started to creep into what we call delta blues so i mention that because a big part of this is not just the notes So keep that idea in mind when you're playing I'll Go With Her. The closest thing that we have to a solo in this piece is after you've sung the last line. Um, every time I hear that old lonesome church bell ring, I think about the song my baby used to sing. And he comes up to the seventh fret. Really, that same A chord that you've moved, you've now moved... Making into a sep into a an E. You do three of those, and this little walk is walking the D string from the eighth fret, ninth fret, and then playing the G string at the seventh fret so come back to your basic one chord do the whole cycle song with the fourth string played open 
Fifth string, second fret. Fifth string open. Fifth string, second fret. Back to the D string open. That's about it. Reverend Robert Wilkins, I'll go with her blues.